Hey everyone, my name is Jordan and I'm one of the Senior Enterprise Solution Architects working here at Postman. Today, I wanna to take you through the state of the API report that was released earlier this year. This report is the result of one of the most compre comprehensive and largest surveys that we've done on APIs ever. It's the fifth time we've run the state of the API survey and this year was by far the biggest response we've received. We received responses from more than 40,000 individuals across the globe that were kind enough to share their insights across more than 50 different questions. The questions ranged from demographic information and personal experience with APIs, all the way through to company size, number of developers, technology in use, um, the approach and methodology that they've got to building APIs, and just a range of, of various different questions. For those of you that haven't had a chance to read the report, you can go ahead and scan the QR code here to take a look. The presentation that I've got today will take you through some of the insights that we've gained from this survey, some of which were published publicly in the report. Others were gained from myself and some others taking a closer look at the data to see what we can find. And also we do have a special announcement at the end of the presentation, so make sure you stay tuned for that. We had a huge range of roles um, as part of the survey, we, we asked each individual, what is their role, their job title? And we had a huge range of roles for the respondents that came back. Everything from almost 2,000 C-level executives, which frankly is unheard of for this type of survey. Even for paid ones, which is just not, you, you never get that many C-level executives responding. So it was really amazing to see that. But from C-level right through to technical writers, UX designers, students, academics, there was a whole a whole diverse range of, of respondents. Users with the job title of full stack and back-end developer roles, however, dominated the responses. They made up more than 43% of the respondents to the survey, with only 8% of the respondents identifying as quality engineer or QA. This does line up nicely with our data on Postman users. During the onboarding phase of setting up a Postman account, we ask a similar question, what is your job title? And approximately 42% of users identify as a full stack or back-end developer, while currently just over 6% of users identify as QA. I'm going to posit that this also represents the people that are watching this right now. I'd say about half of you fit into that full stack back-end developer role and about maybe six to eight of you identify as QA. And this also matches up with how we build our scrum teams or our development teams. We tend to have a ratio of about one to four or one to five of QA to developer. So it's not that the QAs are underrepresented in this, it is more that there are just more developers in the world that, that are responding to these surveys. But because of this, a lot of the insight that I'll offer today will be based on what developer roles can take away. Not to say that QAs aren't gonna take anything away from this, but um, a lot of the, the insights that we garner are, are geared towards the developer audience. So with that, let's get started. So first key insight is around investment in APIs. Even with the current economic climate where organizations are slowing down spend and reducing headcount and you know being a bit more selective about hiring, 92% of the respondents of the survey believe that the investment in APIs is going to at least stay the same or increase within their companies over the next 12 months. This again is an increase of last year's survey where this was 89%. So this is really good news for us that have you know dedicated our lives to APIs and building APIs. Um, the robots aren't going to take over just yet. So it's a reminder to keep learning, keep investing um, your time and uh, trying to understand new tools and technologies and, and leaning into APIs. They're going to be around for a while yet, um, and you're going to have good job security at least for the next year, possibly two. Okay. The second key insight is around quality. When we asked what the top priorities were for developing new products and services um, to all respondents, what we did was we then took that data and we segregated it based on job title. So based on the, the role of different people. And we separated out the leaders. So people that have a C level job title, uh, senior vice president, vice president, head of engineering, you know, these types of leadership positions. When we took the, the response to that question, what are the top priorities for developing new products and services? 78% of the leaders selected quality of the solutions as the highest priority. This was by far the highest priority overall, but for that leadership group, it was really interesting to see that's that the highest priority for them, the next highest priority was speed. 
So they want quality first, followed by speed. This does show us that our senior leaders on average care more about quality than speed of delivery though. Okay, so when you need to ask for that extra week to make sure that your service is gonna be up to scratch before you launch it, this is some good data to kind of lean on from there. The last point around here was 33% um, prioritized cost reduction. Now you will notice that these numbers don't add up to 100%. This is quite often through this, you will see that not all of my numbers add up to 100% and it's because people were able to select multiple choices. Okay, so this isn't a, um, a one choice only, which would be 100%. This is a multiple choice questions. Um, so yes, 33% prioritized cost reduction. So again, this shows us on average that our senior leaders are willing to spend money when they know that the quality of the solution will be improved as an outcome of that spend. Okay. So the question that we have here is how can backend developers improve quality? One potential solution as we drill into the data a bit more is the idea of an API first approach. So if you've been to this conference before or you know, you've not been living under a rock for the last couple of years, you would have heard about this idea of API first. But back to basics, API first is the idea of prioritizing API development at the beginning of a project to get a huge range of benefits delivered in the longer term. The APIs that you design and build at the start then become the building blocks for the other products and services. You build on top of the APIs. We asked individuals to rate their company in terms of this idea of API first and how mature they were in this way of thinking. Only 20% of the respondents rated themselves on an eight or higher on the scale. It was a one to 10 scale, you know, rate yourself on one to 10 in, in terms of um, API first thinking. So 20% rated themselves an eight or higher. We took that 20% group and we called them the API first leaders. And we started to rate what API first leaders and how they were performing on a different scale compared to people that rated themselves seven or lower. What we found when we looked at the data involving, you know, questions around productivity, around quality, around speed and of integrations, that clearly showed that major the majority of people agreed API first companies are more productive, create better software and integrate with partners faster. You know, 75% of people agreed with these statements. In smaller companies, uh, the benefits of API first are minimal, okay? But as the size of the organization grows, so do the benefits around embracing this API first methodology. If we drill into that a little bit more, we can see that companies with greater than 100 developers employed will see an increased deployment velocity or development velocity, sorry. So their, their, their speed of feature release is much faster. They have more frequent deployments into production and by far they have fewer deployment issues. We could see that API first companies agreed that had one in around one in 20 deployments failing compared with a much higher number for non API first companies. And they also had a faster resolution when issues were occurring. So these benefits were starting to really grow as the size of the company grew. Another benefit that came out with API first companies is that they're far more likely to view their APIs as products. 76% of this API leaders group does this, okay, compared to only 46% of the non API leaders group. This idea of treating your APIs as products means the whole approach to launching the API changes. We build it differently you know, with a much more user focused approach. We're thinking about how the users are gonna consume this product very, very clearly right from the start. We test it differently, making sure that the user experience for that product is excellent. We package it differently with better documentation, better support, and then we market it differently to ensure we can actually get some users. And in most cases, when they're launched as products, we price it. So one of the key metrics that we started to measure from these API products is the revenue that they can generate. We saw that when APIs are treated by products, treated like products by these API first companies, on average, they generated a much higher revenue than not. The data shows us that 74% or three quarters of the API leaders have API products that generate revenue. And in a handful of cases, this revenue was the majority of the revenue for the entire company. This was much, much higher than the companies that didn't classify themselves as API first. So an API first approach is 
not only likely to bring out a higher quality for the services being built, but also more bottom line revenue for the company. Okay, so this is a major tech for API first. And any companies that are starting to think about reasons why they should be going API first, here's some great data to back up that approach. It is not all fun and games though for the API first leaders. The API first leaders were twice as likely to be reporting managing too many APIs and microservices. Okay, this was called out as an obstacle to producing new APIs. You know, they called out that they've already got too many. Why? Why should I be building more? Um, they're, they're spending a lot of time, you know, managing and maintaining these these different services. This the the biggest obstacle that was called out by all groups by far was lack of time. You know, everyone is complaining that they don't have enough time to build new services. This was followed closely by lack of people and then lack of documentation, okay? If we drill a bit further into this idea of lack of documentation, this also came out when developers leave, okay? So when they leave the organization, outdated documentation was by far the biggest gap that people called it. This was regardless of job title, API first mindset, geography, company size, whatever facet you wanna look at the data across, everyone was complaining that outdated documentation was the biggest gap, okay? So I guess one of the, the takeaways from this is to make sure you update your documentation um, or find tooling that is gonna help you, help you to do that and keep it up to date. Moving on, security is a medium priority, okay? On average, 53% or around half of the respondents called out security of applications being a priority at all. The only outlier here was the users with the, or the respondents with the security engineer job title. They prioritize security 77% of the time. I'm not sure what the other 23% of security engineers were prioritizing, but they weren't prioritizing security. But that said, with half of people uh, calling out security as being a priority, it is curious when you start to look at some of the other data that's going on, especially over the last 12 months, where we've been hearing a lot more about data breaches. If we look at Australia alone, between January and June of this year, there've been over 400 registered data breaches with the Australian um, Information Commissioner, with 70% of the data breaches being due to a malicious or criminal actor. Most of the breaches were reported in the health sector, followed closely by financial services. It's also important to note that the health sector was more than twice as likely to have a breach, not due to malicious uh, or criminal actor, but instead due to human error, more than twice as likely than any other sector to have that. If you broaden this, um, this number out to global, the number of reported data breaches in the world is well into the thousands. And according to IBM, it was resulted in an average cost of 4.4 million US dollars to the affected organizations. So with this massive risk potential, it's curious to see that developers are not more concerned about the security of their APIs and applications. And probably we should be starting to change our thinking along that line. One of the last insights I wanna share is around generative AI. Okay, we, this was the first year that we included a generative AI question in the survey, and we found that 60% of the respondents are currently using generative AI in their work. Okay. This is most likely to find uh, mistakes in code. This was the top uh, reason called out, which was around 32%, but also to do things like generate documentation, generate comments, and also interestingly, to teach people how to write code. If we take a look at generative AI as well, and we think about what developers are most wanting to work on, this was called out as the most interesting area for, develop, for developers to want to you know, pursue over the next 12 months, with more than 37% of developers stating that this was the area they were most excited about for the next year. Okay. The last insight is around tooling, and I think this is just some key um, call outs to see where, where things are at in the, in the market at the moment. Um, I think you probably could have guessed a few of these. GitHub is by far the most used um, CSCM or version control system. It's 64% of the vote going that way, or the survey results going that way. Grafana is the most popular APM or um, performance monitoring tool, 36% there. GitHub Actions is most popular CI CD with 50%. 
and AWS API Gateway is the most popular gateway also with 50%. And of course, Postman is the most popular API platform on the market today. So in summary, it is a positive outlook for APIs. Investment in APIs continues to grow. Um, our leaders believe that quality of solutions, the quality of the solutions that we develop is by far the most important attribute. So asking for more time in order to get a higher quality output should not be a big ask. We can see the benefits that occur of an API first mindset, both for better quality of solutions and a bigger bottom line or revenue for the company. As the API first mindset occurs, um, more APIs are built. And as these are deployed as microservices, they do become much harder to manage. So this is something to you know, consider as you go down that API first path. There are a lot of benefits, but there are also some things to just make sure you're aware of. And as developers are leaving, documentation is by far the biggest gap that's left. So people make sure you update your documentation. Security is only a priority for half of you, but in my personal opinion, this should be a priority for all of you. And uh, lastly, the focus on API developers in the next year is going to shift towards generative AI. So for organizations that are being a bit hesitant around that, this is what developers are calling out for. This is where they want to learn and grow, and we need to make sure that we're giving the developers um, an opportunity to, to embark on these and, and learn this as a new skill. Okay. And with that, we can move on to the announcement. So this year, we're really excited to announce that today we're launching a public API workspace for the data that was collected with the state of the API uh, survey. This project takes all of that survey response data and makes it available for anyone in the world to query via an API. You can access this by scanning the QR code or browsing to the address on the screen. Uh, from here, you can create your own report with pretty much anything that you like. You can validate the data that I've presented today and you know, question me on it, or you can create your own insights or opinions from there. You know, What are the top development priorities for each industry that we, we gathered in the survey? What is the, um, what is the preferred architecture for people that have been working in the API space for, for 10 years? Or um, even who is, like, who is more bullish on API investment this year, CEOs or, or UX developers or UX designers? Okay, so have a play and feel free to contact me if you have any feedback on the API or, or you want to talk about any of this kind of stuff. Okay. And so with that, thank you for your time. My name is Jordan Walsh, and I hope you've enjoyed this presentation. Cheers.